become still in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we bless you and honor you. We thank you so much for helping us thus far, especially in our waiting, our fasting, and praying. And for everyone that you've given a heart of obedience, we say thank you. We give you praise and honor in the name of Jesus for those times spent with you in praying, in calling upon you, in communing with you, and seeking your face. And we trust those times are not wasted. And so we ask you in the name of Jesus, let the result begin to show forth. You have not asked the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. You are a God of gain. You are a God of increase. Father, all the benefits, the rewards for those who wait on you, let it be made manifest in the life of everyone in the name of Jesus, especially those who waited on you in the name of Jesus. Let yokes indeed be destroyed. Let them become like watered garden. Let their light shine from obscurity. In the name of Jesus, let the impossible be made possible. Let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus, let their speed spring forth speedily. Let their health spring forth speedily. Let their health spring forth speedily. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, and cause everyone to walk upon their high places. Walk upon their high places. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you that you will guide us continually. Guide us continually. Make us sensitive to your guidance, to your leading, to your voice. Let us know your voice intimately. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. We give you all the praises. And Lord, we ask you in the name of Jesus that all these things we've learned, all these things, we continue in our lives. We receive grace. We receive grace, divine ability to continue therein. In the mighty name of Jesus, so that our profiting may appear unto all and your name may be glorified. Thank you, precious Redeemer. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Good morning, everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 85 and verse 8. This morning, we're going to be looking at supernatural sustenance through God's leading. Supernatural sustenance through God's leading or through God's voice. Psalm 85 verse 8. Psalm 85 and verse 8. It says, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. So God speaks. Please let me tell your neighbor, God speaks. Louder, say God speaks. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. So God is speaking over every situation, over every circumstances. He speaks solution. He speaks answer. He speaks way out. I will hear what God the Lord will speak for he will speak what? Peace unto his people. In the midst of great confusion, in the midst of the storm, when God speaks, he speaks solution, he speaks peace unto his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. May you not return back to folly. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 21, God covenanted to lead us, to guide us. Amen. That is his covenant. And God is a covenant keeping God. He never goes back on his word. Verse 17, he says, Thus said the Lord. Let's read together, everybody. Once you go. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the only one of Israel, 
I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to what? To profit. Even in the midst of this hardship, God will teach you to profit. I can't hear you louder. Amen. God will teach you to profit. He will teach you to excel. He will teach you to have abundance. He will teach you to flourish. He says, I am the Lord, thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. Now, let's read the remaining part. Which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Why is that very important? There is a way that seemeth right to man, but the end thereof is what? Death and frustration. You will not be frustrated. Then he says, verse 18, Oh, that thou hast hearkened unto me. May you hearken unto him. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandment. Then had thy peace been as a river. The same word translated peace from the Hebrew is the same word translated prosperity, progressive progress. Meaning, if you are hearkening to my commandment, to my leading, to my guidance, to my voice, you would have experienced progressive progress because there is no hardship that can hinder my war. Hallelujah. Then are thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Verse 21. 21. Let's read verse 21 now. Everybody want to go. Come on, read it louder. Again. Louder, you can do better. Again. And they tested not when he led them through what? The desert. The most despicable, the most difficult place. Where no water is. The Bible says they tested not as long as the Lord was the one leading them. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. That means when God is the one leading you, when he's your shepherd, God will do the impossible to ensure you are comfortable. It was in the wilderness. There was no river. There was no sea. There was no spring. There was no well. And yet God made the rock to pour out water. In this season, where everyone is crying, as you allow God to lead you, to guide you, even the most impossible situation will pour out water for you. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He claimed the rock also. And the what? And the waters gushed down. Rock is symbolic of hardship, difficult matters. And God can cause those difficult matters to give way and then something comfortable will flow out of it. Somebody say, I believe. Say it louder. Say, I believe. In Isaiah 58 and verse 11, one of the great benefits of waiting on the Lord, on fast of fasting and praying is that God covenanted to guide you continually. Verse 11, everyone, and the Lord shall guide thee continually, consequent upon your consistent, continuous fasting. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in what? In drought. Hardship. Time of drought is a time of serious economic hardship. No rain. No, 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 no harvest, nothing whatsoever. Things are so difficult. But God says, in that time, when I am the one guiding you, I will ensure you are satisfied in drought. You will be satisfied. You and your family, you will be satisfied. And make fat thy bones. You will not grow lean. You know, the, 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 the tragedy of it, the paradox of it is that many people think when, when they fast, hey, I will lean, I will do this. I will. No, the Bible says, your fat, he said, and make fat thy bones. Amen. And thou shalt be like what? A watered garden. Somebody say, I receive that. Say it louder. Say, I receive that. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. If you shout amen, nothing good will fail in your life again. Nothing good will fail in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. So many, many wonderful promises of God for us. 
Hallelujah. In Psalm 32 and verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8. Let's read these scriptures together. Glory to God. You see God here says, no, covenanting. God saying, I will instruct thee. Let's read together. One, two, go. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Hallelujah. If God guides you, you cannot be restricted. If God guides you, you cannot be stagnated. If God guides you, you cannot ever experience sorrow. Why? God always lead forward and not backward. You will go forward. Uh, uh, that amen has question mark. You will go forward. God never leads backward. He leads always forward. Amen. If God is your shepherd, goodness and mercy will become your eternal companion. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall what? Not want. Glory to God. Psalm 48 verse 14. I want to give you as many scriptures as are possible. So as you write them down, you go back and check on them. Psalm 48 verse 48 and 14. One, two, go. For this God is our God. For how many times? Hallelujah. For how many times? As far as I'm concerned, forever and ever. Then what will happen? He will be our guide even unto death. Meaning you will never get to a point in life that you don't need this guidance. Nobody outgrows the guidance and the leading of the Lord. To think you can outgrow it is to suffer yourself unnecessarily. He will be our guide when, come on, when, even on today. The only time you will not need his guidance is when you die. Shout hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying now? Because at that time you are already with him. But as long as on this you are on this earth, you will need the guidance, the leading, the instruction, the voice of the Lord to triumph. You will triumph. And that amen is too slow. Hallelujah. Finally, finally, let's look at uh, Psalm 23 verses 1 to 5. That great, 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 you know, a shepherd's son. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd simply means pastor. So if you read another version, it says, the Lord is my pastor. And that version says, the Lord is my guide. Glory be to God. I mean, you have seen the hard men that uh, are hardening their livestock, their cows. It's not the cows who lead. It's not the cow who says, this is the way I'm going. Praise the name of Jesus. That responsibility lies on the shoulder of the shepherd. He's the one who determines the right place to take them to. Amen? To grace, to water. So that is the picture here. Everybody, let's read one to go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall what? I shall what? I shall not want. Good news says, I have everything that I need. As long as God is your shepherd, want, lack will never be your portion. He says, they tasted not when I led them through the desert. They lacked nothing. That's the beauty of God's leading, of allowing God to be our shepherd. Don't take the leading of your life don't take it for granted. Don't take. Don't think you know how to do it. If you think you know how to do it, you know the steps to take. I can guarantee you regret and sorrow will be the end product. But that will not be your portion. Verse 2, together, what happens when he leaves? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside what? Still waters. God does not lead into trouble. 
he does not lead into confusion. If God is the one who is the who is leading you, you cannot come up and say, "Hey, see what God has led me into." No. Verse three, He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of what righteousness. God cannot lead you into something. Hallelujah. And then you are you are you are you are shortchanging yourself or you are breaking the scriptures. Glory to God. He's not the one who leads into such things. God cannot lead you into something that you will suffer loss. Are you following what I'm saying now? He can't. He can't. He will lead you in the path of righteousness. That as he's leading you, at the same time, your heaven is guaranteed. God cannot lead you away from himself. Somebody say, I hear so you think God is the one leading you into something and you are doing something that you know the Bible marks wrong. No, that's not part of righteousness. It is not God who leads you there. Are you following what I'm saying now? Because the Bible gives us the privilege to test every spirit, to know which one is the truth. Somebody came up. He said he's a pastor. He said, and God told him to go and marry the second wife. He said, if you don't marry that second wife, I will kill you. So he married the second wife. After some time, he came up again. He said, God told him, if you don't marry this third one, I will deal with you. Hello, somebody. I'm telling you truth. Something I read. You know, people can glory in their foolishness. And we know that is a lie. Amen. He's either guided by his flesh, by his lust, or by the devil. God cannot guide you against his word. Somebody say, I hear. I say, I, somebody say, I hear. I used to know a certain pastor. At that time, we were just a brother. Hallelujah. And uh, he had a ministry. And he had an assistant pastor with him. Many times, he would just stay outside there with his uh, cover clothes. And the assistant pastor would come and say, ah, Pastor, you, you have not heard. He said, God said, I shouldn't come to church today. I shouldn't come to what? Church today. You know what, be, what became of him eventually? He ran mad. God cannot lead you against Hebrews 10.25. Somebody say amen. He said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves like the practice of some is. Leadeth me in the path of righteousness. God cannot lead you not to greet your neighbor. Is somebody get what I'm saying now? He said, God said, I shall speak to my neighbor again. That is evil. It's not God. God said, I should not see my mother and my father again. That they are the reason behind my not making progress. I can tell you a reason you will never make progress. The reason why you are not making progress is because you are dishonoring them. That's what the word of God says. Honor your father and your mother. That it may be what? It may be well with you. And that you may live long on the land that your God has given unto you. God cannot lead you against his war. God cannot lead you against righteousness. Rise standard. Amen. And he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I may come across confrontation, challenges, but as long as God is leading me, he is there with me. I will fear no evil, for thou art what? With me. You see, the presence of God is guaranteed when you are sure that God is the one doing what? Leading you. Amen. From today, may God begin to lead you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. What happens? They comfort me. Now verse 5. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my word, of my, even though my enemies may congee, may show forth on the path that God is leading me, they will do me no what? No harm. Hallelujah. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And then look at the next verse. What happens? Hallelujah. Verse 6. Everybody, surely. Before you can say surely, 
It's because you know he's the one leading me in this thing. He's the one who led me. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me and I will dwell where? In the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. O Spirit of the living God, please give us understanding in your word. Make us guidable. Let the virtues, the qualities of those that you lead, that you guide, that you instruct, develop in us. Remove pride. Remove foolishness. Remove idolatry. Remove impatience. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may please be seated. Supernatural sustenance through God's name. In John chapter 10 and verse 27, Jesus said, John 10, 27. John 10, John 10, John 10, 27. John 10, 27. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I what? And I know them, and they follow me. For a believer in Christ Jesus, one of the things that confirms your sonship is your ability to hear God's voice. There is this story, true story, I believe. A woman had two cows. She was raising them. Suddenly she saw them disappear. She saw them with a neighbor who had many other cows. So she went to the police station and told them that my neighbor had stolen my cows. The police said, how did you know your neighbor stole them? Did you write your name on them? He said, no. So how did you know that it is your own? Since you did not write names that can be identifiable on those cows. He said, just follow me. I'll prove to you that they are my cows. So they went. And they got to the neighbor's farm. And that neighbor had hundreds of cows. And the police said, look out. There are hundreds of cows here. What would a man who has hundreds of cows want to do with your own two? So how do you prove it? They asked the neighbor whom she alleged to have stolen the, the cows. He said, did you steal her cows? He said, no. And the woman said, no problem. Just wait. And he called the first cow. By name, the cow rose and was coming towards her. Call the second cow by name. The cow rose, and as they were going, the cow followed her. So the police knew she was right. In John chapter 10, Jesus told us clearly. He said, I know my sheep, and my sheep do what? They know me. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they do what? They follow me. I call them by name. One of the things that confirms your sonship in the Lord is your ability to hear God. And that DNA is inside every believer. 
That what? DNA. The same way the DNA for your children to hear your voice, to recognize you in the midst of multitude is already embedded in them. And let me state to help you that outside of your salvation through faith in Christ Jesus and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you, the most important thing that I consider to be the greatest asset in your life is your ability to hear God. Say with me, my greatest asset, say it louder, is my ability to hear God. This asset supersedes the accountant definition of asset. Your ability to hear God. That's what settles and sets your lives in order. Your ability to hear God makes the crooked become straight. It is what converts ashes to beauty. Your ability to hear God, be guided, be instructed by God. is the pathway to elevation. Check out through the Bible and look at characters like Abraham. He was regrowing right there in his father's house. At that old age, he was still staying under his father's roof. Until the voice of the Lord came unto him. Abraham, rise. Depart from your father's house, from your kindred, and from your land. Unto the land that I will show you. That's chapter 12 of the book of Genesis, from verse 1. And God says, and I will make your name great. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. I will bless everyone that blesses you and curse anyone that curses you. And verse 4, the Bible says, And Abraham departed. And that was the starting point of his elevation. You will no longer be granted. The starting point of his elevation. And in Isaiah 51, God Almighty says, hey, Look, he says, Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness. He says, Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah your mother that bear you. Look unto the rock from which you are hewn. He says, For I called him alone. I called him alone. He had nothing to show for his life, nothing to show for his human existence for upward of 65 years, nothing meaningful to point to. I called Abraham alone. I blessed him and I increased him. When God calls, may you answer. When God leads, may you follow. When God speaks, may you hear. I can't hear your louder amen. That is the distinguishing factor ability to hear God. And you must of a necessity exercise yourself unto this art of godliness. Exercise yourself to it. 
God's voice, God's leading, God's instruction is not the exclusive preserve of the pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. It is the heritage of every born again child of God. Come on, somebody say I hear. I think that's where many believers are defeating themselves. They think it is the exclusive preserve for some few. No. We can teach you to know how God speaks, how God leads. And that's one of my mission here this morning. Is your father. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are who? They are the sons of God. That's what confirms your sonship. That's what confirms your sonship. As a matter of fact, it's a sign of spiritual ill health not to hear God. When you give birth to a child, a baby, after some time, the Bible says, he that heareth speaketh often. Abi. So that child begins to pick what he hears. And he begins to repeat them at his own pace or at her own pace. Glory be to God. But if that child is not saying anything after two years, three years, four years, five years, then you begin to think there is something wrong. Abi, there is something wrong. It's a sign of ill health. Spiritually speaking, it's a sign of ill health not to hear God. And I pray for you, if there is anyone like that here today, there will be healing in the name of Jesus. God will heal your hear, will heal your spiritual hearing, he will heal you of dullness of hearing in the mighty name of Jesus. You look at the likes of Elijah. What makes a difference and makes their life a distinction was the ability to hear God. The ability to do what? To hear God. How can I be a child of God and Jesus? You have to go home and read and provoke yourself. In John, in John Gospel chapter 10, Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So one of the doorway to knowing the voice of God to being led is knowing God. Knowing God. Somebody say knowing God. Uh -huh. You develop an appetite for God. You press yourself into him. For they that do know their God shall be strong. And one of the things that makes you strong is the voice you have heard. You see confusion all around you. Everybody is going down because of the confusion. But God has spoken to you. Just like, just like uh, Paul. On his way to Rome, he was being taken as a prisoner to Rome. And the Bible says, the wind was against them. Hallelujah. According to King James, eh, the, the time they were traveling, it was in the time of winter, and it was not commodious for them to travel. It was not right for them to travel at that time because of the boisterous wind. Glory be to God. And he told them, but because a prisoner has no right, nobody listened to him. And they got into the high seas. Glory be to God. And there was a turbulence. A turbulence that led them to to fast corporately for 14 days. They didn't eat anything. They didn't drink any water. Because there was no means of safety on the icy. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's because you have not reached a place of desperation. That's why you think food is your next companion. It's your daily companion. You are not here to eat as I told some of you yes, yesterday. You are here to fulfill purpose. So if all your life what you are running after is a eat, 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 eat. Praise God. 
I pity your destiny. So they fasted 40 days. They were so troubled. They lightened the sheep. They threw every of their properties away into the sea. And at the end of the 14th day, a man who hear God, Paul said, you should have listened to me from the onset. I told you. I warned you. Praise the name of Jesus. I warned you people. You should have listened to me. And if you had listened to me, you would not have incurred all these losses to yourself. He said, but don't worry. Even though you have suffered a lot of material losses, there shall be no loss of life. He was not speaking that as a motivational speaker. Who? Hello, somebody. He was not just saying to them, hey, you know, after darkness comes light. That's motivation. You must be sure that you heard from God. Just like uh, some economic pundits are saying that uh, this hardship, oh, uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Have they not been saying that before? Have you seen any light? <laughs> Hello, somebody. God is the only true light who will not deceive you. As far as these people are concerned, they are confused. They know nothing. They just want to make name and they made it. But God will make way for you. I say you. God will make way for you. He said, but for there stood by me over the night an angel of God whose I am and whom I serve, whose I am, I belong to him. He owns me and I serve him. I have a record of service. So that angel said to me, there shall be no loss of life, save of the sheep. He had God. And that brought stability unto him. In the midst of this unstable economy, God will grant you stability in your heart. You will just know that things will be well with you and your family. In the name of Jesus. You will just know that God will sustain you. No matter what comes, God will do what? Will sustain you. So there is no greater anchor to hold on to. There is a song that him that says, We have an anchor. That keeps the soul. There is no greater anchor to keep your soul at a time like this than the anchor of the voice of God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me quickly share some nuggets with you before I show you how to position yourself for the leading, the guidance and the voice of the Lord. Number one, get to know this, that God never leads backward. God never, never, never leads backward. No matter how difficult the situation or circumstances of life is, God will not say go back. We have examples in the Bible. The God, God was leading the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And then God led them by a longer route intentionally because God wants to win them from Egyptian culture and Egyptian lifestyle. The Bible says there was a way they could have taken that would have taken them there less than 40 days. But God decided to lead them through a longer path. And so the longer path, they had to go through the Red Sea. Somebody say Red Sea. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> and there was no bridge. No development at such a time that bridges would have been constructed for their easy passage. And so, as they got there, Pharaoh has changed his mind according to what God said. Because God wanted to destroy him once and for all. That's how God will destroy everything harassing your destiny. 
I can't hear you louder. Amen. If you are the one I'm talking to, I say God will destroy everything that is harassing your destiny. So he changed his mind. And he led his armies. And they pursued after them with their chariots and horses. So that when the children of Israel got to that place, they knew not what to do, including Moses. Moses didn't know what to do. But listen to me, sir. When it is God leading you, God will show up. Let me say it again. When it is God leading you, when you don't know what to do, God will do what? He will show up. Because he always knows what to do. Jesus asked his disciples, says, um, go and give these people food. Ah. They said, Master, 200 denarii, penny worth of food is not sufficient, number one, to feed all these multitudes. Number two, this is a desert place. Where are we going to get food here? But the Bible says, Jesus said that to prove them because he already knows what to do. Look at me, I'm telling you the truth. In Christ Jesus, I lie not. God knows what to do about your life to sustain you. That's why you must follow him with all of your heart. Amen. And so the children of Israel look back. They saw the chariot of Pharaoh and the Egyptian army charging at them. To the right was a mountain. To the left was a valley. Before them, Red Sea. God deliberately did that because he wanted to show once and for all that he is God and that there is no impossibility that can stand against him. That impossible situation will not stop you. God will make a way out of it. And Moses in fear cried to God. At such a time, you must be able to hear God do. And God said to Moses, why are you crying unto me? Tell the children of Israel to move forward and take that rod in your hand, stretch it, and divide the Red Sea. Amen. Divide the Red Sea. And he took that rod, stretched it, and right in their naked eyes, the supernatural became natural. Are you following what I'm saying now? The Red Sea was torn into two by a fierce east wind. Pia! And to the right and to the left, the water congealed. You know what it means to congeal? It was like an ice block, but it's not ice block because it was still moving. Praise God. It was still moving. In fury, still moving. Still moving. And it was like a wall to the right, to the left. And the children of Israel were passing by. That's how you will pass through. You will pass through at this hardship for you and your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. The thing was congeal. You know, if you've gone to the bar beach before, you know it is so sandy that you can't move, you cannot move so freely. Am I talking? Have you been there before? But the Bible says it was congealed. Because the fate of over 2 million to 3 million people were, were in jeopardy. And the place became like a paved land until each and every one of the Israelites passed through. God recognized them. And some of the Egyptians who are taking the oath by staying under the blood with them and by partaking of the Passover. And the enemy were charging him as they were coming. As they were coming. You know, these ones were moving in by leg and they were coming by chariot. So, naturally, those who are moving by chariot must be much more faster than those who are moving by leg. And God did something. Somebody say God did something. God will slow down your enemy. Permanently, they will not be able to catch on to you. You know what God did? God punctured. God punctured all their tires. Have you made an attempt to drive with a, uh, a, a punch, a punctured tire before? Amen. You can't move with speed. 
glory to God. Are you following what I'm saying now? And their driving was so hard until those people recognized that this is the finger of God. God's voice. So God didn't say at that point, go backward. Go and hide yourself. Get into the valley. That would have been suicidal. God didn't say, go to the mountain. How would they be able to climb it? We are not talking of Olumo. When you see some mountain, Olumo paints into insignificance. Is somebody get what I'm saying now? You will not be even be able to see the peak. You just discover that they are lost in the sky. That's the kind of thing we are talking of here. But God made a way for them. There can never be a situation, sir, that God will say retreat. Mm -mm. In God, when it is when He's the one leading you, it is always forward, ever, backward, never. Somebody say forward, ever. Louder, louder, louder. Backward, never. That will be your position. And that will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. Number two, if God is your shepherd, goodness and mercy will always follow you. If it is God who is leading you, be rest assured, goodness and mercy will always follow you. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the heavens. And number three, when God is the one leading you by his voice, whichever means he decides to lead you, there will be no regret, no sorrow when he's the one leading you. No regret, no sorrow. Somebody say no regret. Louder now. No sorrow. No regret, no sorrow. Amen. So how does God lead us? Number one, through his word. Through the word. The word of the Lord. The word of God is the primary means of God's leading. Every other one or every other means we are going to look at, they are subsidiary. The word of God is the primary means of God's leading. And that is intentional. The reason why you see some people who claim God is leading them and you check it against the background of God's word and you do not see that it is a leading into righteousness. I said, thou leadeth me in the path of what? Righteousness. In the path of righteousness. is because number one, the devil has succeeded in cutting them off from the world. Because the word of God is the basic standard for our life. The Bible, the acronym for the Bible is by basic instruction before living arts. Basic instructions before living arts. It is the basic and fundamental instruction for living. It is the manual for life. Say with me, the Bible, the word of God is the manual for my life. Your life cannot graduate or become better than the light you find here. That's why the Bible says the entrance of his war gives light and it gives understanding to the simple When light comes, you are not groping in darkness again. Am I talking? 
you are not struggling to find anything again. You locate whatever you want so cheaply and so effortlessly. Praise the name of Jesus. The entrance of his wall gives light. Light for instruction. Gives understanding to the simple. You know what to do like the sons of Isika. In Psalm 119 and verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, verse 105. He says, Thy wall is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It enables me to know where to put my feet unto so that I will not be snared. Verse 133. Verse 103. 33. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Psalm 119 verse 133. Order my steps in thy wall. Order my steps in what? In thy wall. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. God orders our steps. He leads us primarily, basically, through his word. In Psalm 19, the Bible says, The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful, is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord calls the hinds to calves. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, upon the wall. That voice is what is called spirit of understanding. Fine, you are studying the word of God and then that word jumps at you. Praise God forevermore. Or you have stored that word in your heart as the Bible tells us to. Say let the word of God, you know, Colossians 3.16 let the word of God uh, richly dwell in your heart. Admonishing yourself in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs and all that. And then you are praying about something or you are about to take it soon and that word becomes quickened in you. Just flowed into you. Flowed into you. That is God speaking to you. Hello somebody. So the primary means of God's guidance is not going to the prophet. Hello. No. It's not. You know, one of the problems, especially in this part of the world is we like to transfer responsibilities. We like to what? If you know the way some people hold on to the word of prophet, and if you exegeet what they are holding on to, it's not in line with the Bible at all. Not in line with what? With the Bible. It's not even according to common sense. That's they have elevated the word of man, the prophecies of man above the word of God. Meanwhile, it is the word of God should be an instrument for checking through whether those things are outrightly right or wrong. Are you following what I'm saying now? I say, are you following what I'm saying? So if you are here, you go to prophet. I've already punctured your, your jaw in that area. When you neglect this primary and 
basic means through which God leads. The enemy will have an inroad to manipulate your life. And that's what many prophets do. They manipulate people's life. They manipulate what? People's life. Because they know that there is no way you have you are going to check out. You are not like one of the you are not like uh, the Berean Christians who checked out from the word of God whether the things they had was outrightly true or not. Praise the name of Jesus. The word of God is the primary means of God's guidance. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So God often speaks through the Bible by highlighting certain words that directly apply to our life and give us understanding of its meaning. Glory to God. That's why, sir, if you are a stranger to the Bible, you must cry to God to let this book be opened unto you. The Bible says, and I wept much because there was no man found worthy to open it. Amen. Whereas weeping and sorrow will become the order of the day. As long as you are a stranger to this book. It is God's instruction and manual to our lives. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. So study it with regularity. With what? Study the word of God with what? Regularity. Study it every time, every day. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. From the mouth of the Lord. From the mouth of the Lord. The Bible says, thou through thy commandment has made me wiser. It is the wisdom bank of God by which you can overcome every challenges of life. Thou through thy commandment has made me wiser than my enemies because they are ever with me. Praise the name of Jesus. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. The word of God is what? Is the sword of the spirit. It is light that shatters darkness. It is water that refreshes the soul. That he might cleanse them by the cleansing of the water through the wall. The world will wash you, will refresh you. Think of an existence without water. Or you go to a place where there is no water. Hello, somebody. I'm sure you don't want to dwell there. You will do everything to jack part from that place to where there is what? There is water. More than that is what an experience without the word of God is. To be too busy without the word of God, amen, is to be busy on the wrong lane. Busyness, they say, is not the same thing as business. Business, B-U-S-Y-N-E-S-S, is not the same thing as what? As business. The first thing you must do every day when you wake up is study the word of God as part of your quiet time. And every other time of the day, get into the word. Get into the word of God. Get into the word. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, as you meditate upon the word, as you read it publicly, it says, thy profiting shall appear. You cannot assess God's voice, God's instruction, God's leading in the world until you learn to begin to spend quality time in the world. Amen. And you do it with frequency and regularity. If there is anything you must share in your daily activities, it's not the word. It's not prayer. Hello, somebody. Shed whatever to you. Shed your time, the time you spend on your phone. Shed it. It's of no value to you. 
if there is anything you must give up, it's not the word of God, it's not prayer. Help me tell your neighbor, if there is anything you must give up in your daily schedule, it's not the word, it's not prayer. It's not even praise. Glory to God. So the word of God is the primary means by which God lead us by which we are instructed and hear his voice. Hallelujah. The Bible says, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to thy soul. When thou hast found it, there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. The word of God is what builds expectations in you. Glory to God. And one of the things the word of God does is it brings stability. Stability stability to you. Isaiah 33 and verse 16. It brings what? Stability. It brings stability. Stability. So knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. It stabilizes you. Everybody is confused. Everybody is agitated. But the world just build what? Stability in you. You will be stable. In the name of Jesus. Number two. Number two is the voice of the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 12, I, uh, sorry, 21, Isaiah 30 and verse 21, the word of God says so emphatically, without any note of ambiguity, he says, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is what? The way. Walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. When it says behind thee, it actually it actually means in you. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in believers now. Glory to God. He resides, he takes his residency in us. So you will hear a voice in you. And when you hear it in you, it looks as though you are somebody is speaking to you. Some people may have that kind of testimony or experiences before. And then you look at, nobody is there. It's the Holy Spirit. May your ear be healed of dull hearing. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, if you look at seven different places, Jesus said, He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to who? To the church. You are a member of the church. So say, let him hear what the spirit, the spirit is the conveyor of the voice of the Lord, whether in the world or to you. That's what Jesus meant when he said in John chapter 10 verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, my sheep hear my voice, my sheep hear my voice. May you become sensitive to his voice henceforth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit said to the churches. He speaks to lead you to overcoming life, to a triumphant life, to a victorious life, a prosperous life. He tells you, do this, and you do it. Get out of there, you get out of there. Don't marry that fellow. Marry this one. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying now? He leads us. God has no problem in speaking to us. It is we who have problem in hearing him. God has no what? No problem in speaking to us and leading us. It is we that have problem of hearing him and receiving his guidance. That is why you must empty yourself of yourself. When you are full of your own ways, you will not be able to receive from him. Glory to God. Is it making any sense to you now? The voice of the Spirit. The voice of the Spirit. More often than not, when you spend time in the word of God, you hear the voice of the Spirit on the word. When you spend time in the place of fellowship, communion with God, worshiping him, you hear what? His voice also. Blessed be God. I say blessed be God. I say blessed, blessed, blessed be God. Hallelujah. One of the things that will aid you I'd like to show you one of the things that will aid you in assessing the voice of God. Pray, praise the name of Jesus. One of the things that will aid you in assessing the voice of the Holy Spirit is worship. What did I say? I say, what did I say? Hallelujah. You worship him. What do you do? You worship him. The Bible says you shall have a song as in the night as when the holy solemnity is done and as when men goes to the mountain with a pipe glory to God they are blowing, worshipping God and you hear the voice of the Lord the Bible says and for through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be broken so that is one of the key elements, key ways by which you hear the voice of the Lord. True worship. True what? Worship. You remember Elisha. King Ahab and Jehoshaphat. The king of Samaria and the king of Judah. They came into confederacy to go to war together. And as they were about embarking on that journey, Jehoshaphat was a man who feared God. He would never do anything without consulting God first. So he asked Ahab, he said, uh, Your Majesty, is there no prophet in this land that we may inquire from? Because at that time they had no Bible. Glory be to God. And so they brought 400 prophets. How many? 400 prophets. And they all prophesy good concerning the war. <laughs> but uh, Jehoshaphat was looking. And Jehoshaphat said, Sir, is there not one more prophet in the land? Uh -uh. This is democracy. Majority carries what? The vote. No, that's not the way God does his things. That man had a check on his inside. That is called discerning of spirit. He knew something is wrong. Majority does, is not always right. Or are not always right. The only one that remains 
He's a man that I don't like because he never speaks good concerning you. I said, let us bring him. So they sent Mikael to go and bring him and then when the servant got there, the servant said, please, don't disgrace yourself. Oh. Don't disgrace everybody. Don't disappoint everybody. 400 prophets have already prophesied. So don't say anything that will be contrary at all. Praise God forevermore. And they said, Tell say. And they went. When they got there, he saw the faces of all those prophets with their prophetic regalia. He was intimidated because he was all by himself. But one with God is in the majority. He was intimidated. Ah. <laughs> Some people, they've not babbed their ear for 60 years. They think that is uh, what makes prophecy effective. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So when he saw that and he was intimidated, all he need to all he did was that, well, I see you will go and you will come back well. And the same Ahab who said he hated him. You see, some people may hate the truth. You know, the Bible says we can do nothing against the truth, but for what? But for the truth. You can't go far from the truth because the truth will always catch up with you. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. He said, did I not tell you to say what God said? And he said, just say the Lord. I see the armies of Israel and of Judah scattered. Ah, he said, what did I say? Didn't I tell you that you will not say anything good concerning me? Praise the name of Jesus. At another time, they went to war. There was no water. And they needed a prophet. So they brought in prophet Elisha. And when they brought Elisha, Elisha said, give me minstrel, worshippers. And as they began to worship God, the word of God made us to understand the hand of God, which means the spirit of God came upon him. So to hear the voice of God, spend time, quality time in the place of what? The voice of the spirit. In the place of what? In the place of worship. We see that example also in Acts of Apostles chapter 13 as they ministered to the Lord through fasting and prayer. The Holy Spirit said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I've called them unto. The Lord will aid us in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will aid us in Jesus' name. The Lord will aid us in Jesus' name. The Lord will aid us in Jesus' name. I say again, the Lord will aid us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Number three, the still small voice. First Kings chapter 19, 11 to 12. The still small voice. The still small voice. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to 12. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the man before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind ran the mountain. And breaking pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was what? Not in the wind. Many times you must learn the art of quietness. And after the wind, an earthquake. The miraculous and the supernatural are not always intertwined with noises. With what? With noises. Or let me put it in another way. They are not always 
spectacular. As you are seated, your ear is growing. God is not making noise about it. The grasses are growing. God is not what? Making noise about it. Your fingers are growing. God is not making noise about it. So they are not spectacular. But they are supernatural. The supernatural are not always. This is what the lesson God is trying to teach us here. <laughs> no, God may not be there. In fact, most of the time, God is not what? It's not there. That's why the Bible says, let all the earth be quiet. God is in his holy temple. And after the earthquake, a fire. Wind, earthquake, fire. They are spectacular. You cannot pretend you didn't see them. If wind begins to blow here now, things will begin to scatter. The window will begin to back, 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 back. And you get to what I'm saying? You know something is happening. Earthquake. Everywhere is shaking. And you say you don't know? You know. Fire. Everybody sees it. He says, the wind, God was not there. The earthquake, God was not there. The fire, God is not what? He's not there. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire. Watch. Is still everybody? 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 That's why the devil likes to fill our life with noises. There are too many noises all around you and you now also join the devil to aid yourself. You now go and buy, what do they call it? Earpod. And you put it in your ear again. To crowd your life out of the voice of God. It's not as if God is not speaking. It's you that you are not hearing. As I'm speaking to you, 24-7, there are radio speaking. Am I communicating? There are radio airwaves all over the places. But when you don't tune to them, you will not hear anything. Part and parcel of your twinning is to learn the art of quietness. You know why we call uh, uh, early morning prayer, why we call it quiet time? Is a time when you quieting your spirit. You pray, you study, then you quiet yourself and you listen to God. I don't see that art again. You pray and you think prayer is a monologue. Whereas God said, Jeremiah 33, call unto me. I will do what? I will answer you. You don't wait for answer. Even radio that used to be a sort of magbesi then, what in checking you? What in basic? What in calling? So they have changed that, that, that description. They don't, they no longer say radio station is a sort of magbesi. What in basic is it? I'll be back on. The worst thing you can do to yourself, to yourself, it's not God who is leading, it's you. And he said, I want to lead you. The worst thing you can do to yourself, sir, is to pray and hurry out out of God. In fact, there is what is called listening prayer. One day, if God enables me, I will teach you on what it means and what that means. Listening prayer. You are praying and you are listening. Praying listen because prayer is a dialogue. What? Dialogue. If you take your phone and you are speaking to somebody for one hour and for one hour you didn't hear that person, will you still be encouraged? You say, hello, are you there? He say, I'm there. And you are the one talking. You know, he has made a fool of you. There are some of you like that. Somebody will call to check on and you are the Or it may be you that he is calling. So he just allow you to waste your distance. I say, I, are you hello, hello? Mumbo eh? Get more change solo leko. He 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 he
and you are wondering why you are not hearing God. Somebody says, still, small voice. That's why you have to learn to retreat. You know what the, the art of they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know what it means? When you are truly waiting on the Lord, amen, you lessen every other activities to concentrate on who? The Lord, his war, his worship, his honor, his majesty. And sometimes people who want to get, have a productive exercise, waiting exercise, they go out of their way and go to somewhere. That's the reason behind mountain. Going to mountain. Going to retreat centers. You are just here all by yourself. Nothing matters to you. You shut your phone for those days you want to be here because you want to be clear of God's direction. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say still small voice. That is the voice you hear in your conscience. The voice that you hear we are, open your mouth and talk to me. The voice you hear we are in your conscience. Either warning you or telling you do this or giving you assurances or encouraging you. You hear that voice in your conscience. It becomes like a green light or like a red light lock or like an amber. Amen. Hallelujah. Please understand, God still speaks. Oh. God still speaks. He still speaks. In Hebrews chapter 1, from verse 1, I say, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manner sp has spoken to the fathers by the prophet, uh, in, as in this last day spoken to us by his son, Jesus. Number four. True dreams and visions. True dreams and vision. God speaks through dreams and visions. In Genesis chapter 20, verse 3 and verse 6. Genesis 20, verse 3 and 6. God can give you a dream either to warn or like in Genesis 28 verse 12 to 15, he can give you a vision to admonish. Here, he said, but God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's what? A man's wife. Verse 6. And God said unto him in a dream. So it was not just one dream he had. Hello, somebody. The first time he had a dream, God warned him that woman is somebody else's wife. Ah, he woke up. Hulua, I didn't know. He told me she's my sister. It is in the innocence of my heart that I've done it. Oh Lord, what should I do? God appeared to him again in a dream. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also will tell thee from sinning against me. That's why me, Jackie, John Thomas, said, I didn't allow you to move near her. I'm the one. Therefore, suffer I did not to touch her, because if you have touched her, you would have, you would have interjected my plan. Come on, are you getting what I'm saying? You would have what? Interjected. You would have truncated my plan. Amen. That was how God moved. So God here revealed himself in a dream to one. Now in Genesis 28 verse 12 to 15, God also revealed or spoke to encourage. And Jacob went out from 12, 12 to 15, 12 to 15. 
Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Iran. And he dreamed. And behold, the ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Hallelujah. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land where thou, hast, where thou liest, to thee will I give it unto thy what? And to thy seed. Next. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 15. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all place whither thou goest, and will bring thee again unto this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Somebody say amen. God gave him dream to encourage him. If you look at the life of Joseph also, praise the name of Jesus. And then Joseph in the New Testament and several other people like that. God gave them dream to warn them. Gave dreams to Nebuchadnezzar, to Pharaoh, because they were the leaders of people. So God can speak through those things. But the problem often times is men often do not listen. Job 33 from verse 14 to 20. Job 33, 14 to 20. He says, God speaks once and sometimes twice. In a dream and in a vision of the night, God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. That is the problem. That is what? It's not as if God is not speaking. The problem is you are not listening. But from today, you will begin to listen. How? In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instruction. Next. That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Next. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. God does all these things through dreams and through what? Vision. And sometimes when he's not hearing, he is chasing also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. He will, he will, he will refuse dainty food so that his life abhorred bread and his soul dainty food. He cannot eat. God is trying to communicate with him. You see how difficult it is sometimes for God to get through to us? He's speaking. He's speaking. He that created the mouth, shall he not speak? He that created the ear, shall he not hear? So it's, the problem is, is, is God still speaking? That's not the problem. God is speaking. The problem is, man is not what? Whatever is blocking your hearing today is removed in Jesus' name. Number five. Inward witness. Inward witness. Romans 8, 14 to 16. Inward witness. That's right in you there. Is you conscious of the Holy Spirit? Amen. God doesn't shout to communicate to us. Amen. Right in you, something is just coming up. It's like an impression. Until you get to understand, until you get to know that God is saying something to me. Some people call it perception. Paul said, I perceive. I perceive. And you see, God will get down to the elementary stage to help us. Look at me, everyone. Sometimes it could start from miniature things. You're about getting out of your house in the morning. In fact, you've already locked the door. And in you, you just have a witness. Go and check your gas or your stove, as the case may be. I'm talking to you of things that has happened to me several times. Sometimes you are far from where the gas or where the stove is, and you just moved as if the smoke of the stove just come, and you know there is nothing. It's God saying something. So, I go back, check, 
many times I will still see the light is on. The fire is still on. That could have caused a disaster if you had ignored it. Are you following what I'm saying now? That's called inward witness. Inward. Somebody say inward. You see, God guides you from the inside, not from the outside. The problem with us is you are looking from the outside. Musi go unla koni nu ete me. It is a lie. Follow the bus or it you will you will blow into small screen, small screen. Pray. What the atom? No atom. A day is going to come, according to the book of Revelation, when God speaks. The Bible says when God speaks, the whole of heaven and earth will roll like a screw. Be with Aka. Boom! All the houses, the mansion, the mountain, the valleys, the ocean. Boom! In a jiffy. John the beloved, when he heard the voice of Jesus on the mount of on the mountain of on the island of Patmo, he said it was like the voice of many what? Many waters. No. He, I didn't say he didn't hear God, but he mistaught people. He had it through inward what? Witness. But because they are not properly taught, he said, he taught his ear. I said, Pastor, can't we hear the audible voice of God? You can hear it. But listen, what you call audible voice is the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. You know, there is a way you stay closer to me or you are relating with me that I can speak at my own low voice and you can be there and you can pick it up. It's all about sensitivity. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if you want to describe it, you say, ah, well, she, he shouted my name. Meanwhile, I didn't shout your name. I just said, for me what? But because you have been acquainted with my voice, you are there. You just speak it up. Praise God forevermore. Are you get what I'm saying now? So if you want to report it and you want to hyperbolize or exaggerate, and that did a shout to the commissioner, I did by me. I didn't shout. That's where many people you see. That's why teaching matters. Come on, now you get what I'm saying. Now, why am I emphasizing this? As I was coming up in Christian faith, I saw people who ran mad. You know what they were looking for? They fasted. They were praying to hear the voice of God. In fact, in one of Kenneth Hagin's book, How to Be Led by the Spirit, he shared the testimony of a certain woman. Because she had a preacher saying, God spoke to him audibly. That's why you must balance it too because you may be wounding some people's faith. From that moment, that woman began to fast and pray. I want to hear God's voice. Ulua, bami soro. Jekin bo ure, nie ti o tome. Jekin bo ure. Oh God, speak. Speak. Olo unje gugu. And so, that woman, that was her desire. And can I take it said that day, he was ministering. And after he ministers, there will be two lines. Those who need healing and those who want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says, and that woman was there. As soon as that woman came there, he said, by the Spirit of God, the discernment of Spirit, he knew everything the woman's problem was. And how many great men of God had prayed for her and she was not delivered. And how that even if he prayed for her, she would still not be delivered. Praise the name of Jesus. And so, when he, she came with her husband, he told the pastor, pastor of the church that he was preaching for said well, now I would like to see these people in your office because he already knew something before and so when they got to the office he narrated everything and he said how did you know he said I didn't know the Holy Spirit showed me and he asked the woman what has been the problem and the woman narrated exactly how I've just narrated to you how she heard a man of God said heard the voice of God audibly and how he began to desire that God will begin to speak to her audibly. Praise God forevermore. And by that, she opened the door for the devil. Are you hearing me? And she was hearing, the, she was hearing voices. And the Bible tells us, it says, there are no voices without signification. 
Are you following what I'm saying now? So, and Kenneth Tegin said he told her how many people she's gone to to pray for her and how she enjoys it. And she asked her right in the presence of the husband and the pastor. He said, do you still like to hear the voice? He said, yes, I like to hear the voice. So you can't help her. So, in my little way, I saw people who ran mad because of that. That's why I'm trying to emphasize it. I want to be a good teacher of the word of God. I don't want to mislead people. Shout amen. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. One day, <laughs> uh, one of my, she was in my class. I was taking, uh, I think, discipleship, adult, uh, discipleship class A. And that Monday, Monday Bible study, she just walked up to me and said, uh, That is how those spiritualists talk. Munitani, is a pastor, is a rapper. Our pastor, I'm suffering. One day, one thing, you're joking. That's a dog class. It didn't occur to me anyway. I said, well, anywhere you want to go, go. It's your problem. Praise the name of Jesus. So later on, the pastor called me and said, uh, that sister had problem. Pastor's mother who died when pastor was a baby. He said she had a voice in the middle of the night. I said, come so far, you are pastor. We come back, we are very, 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 pastor, our last child then was like, maybe she was around two, she should go into 14 days fasting. So I now called her and said, uh, what happened? I said, what happened? Tell me, sister so-and-so. said, in the middle of the night, she just had, you know, those spell. It's part and parcel of why I don't like those kind of them. I won't go forward. I'm not saying this, but I mean, I don't like it. In some churches, you will see it. They, they are praying, burro, 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 kill any microphone. I don't like it. Praise the name of Jesus. This is one of the reasons I'm just telling you now. Amen. I said, just had that thing three times in a year. Back down, back down, back down. And the next voice he had, at last, at last. Yeah? I said, you had it. I said, so what the happened? He said, and the voice began to speak. Oh. I'm talking to you about 30, over 30 something years. What was the problem? She was seeking voices. Stay with your word. As, as I'm speaking, God is speaking to some of you. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So many of them like that. They had wrong voices. May you not hear wrong voices. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, from the day I saw it in the scripture, that there are no voices without signification. If each and every one of us here begin to speak, the modulation of our voices and the type of the way we communicate, that's what the Bible is saying there. That's why the word of God is very, very important. It's the foundation of being led. Because that is how you can know the soccer. Hey, yes, you. I know you. That's your voice. Get out of here. Idiot. But if you are far from the wall. Amen. Come on. I say amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. He said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are who? They are sons of God. In Acts 16, 6 to 7. Acts 16, 6 to 7. Look at it quickly. Acts 16, 6 to 7. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now, yes, next. And after the 
were come to Messiah, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. How did the Spirit suffer them not? Through the inward witness. Sometimes, look at me, everybody. You may have just decided to do some certain things or to go on a journey, and then you are putting up everything. All of a sudden, right up. Because God leads us from, from within. From where? From within. You just lose appetite or desire to go. That's in word witness. Some of you are so heady. In spite of that, you will let your friend convince you and then you begin to go and then you meet something near tragedy. And Kini Konde is so funny. Aradem Lomi, Kini Konde is so funny. You are so stupid enough that you don't know the voice of your father. You don't know the way he lives. That's one of the diverse ways by which he lives. Sit down. It's not compulsory. A lot of people have, they've, they've entered into their premature death as a result of that. Blessed be God. One of the brothers who used to be in my house fellowship and uh, this thing in those days, you know, he was into, he's into this uh, sawmill business and he asked this lorry. At that morning, the driver was coming, came to take the lorry and then he had just observed his quiet time. He said, as he was observing his quiet time, it was coming to him repeatedly that that vehicle should not go that day. That vehicle should not go that day. That vehicle should not go that day. But you see, he was thinking in terms of, ah, delivery. Delivery. One of the key elements is, if you are going to be led of the Lord, you must let the voice of money be silenced in your life. Oh. So, the man came and took the key. He went downstairs to go and meet him and said, eh, eh, He was just telling him things that because his spirit didn't agree. He went up again, he came back. He said, oh, gee, It wasn't up to one hour. The, the vehicle was right up. Was what? Things that could have been avoided. And when we went there to commiserate with him, he said, Can you hear me again? So funny. Can you hear them? So funny. Inward witness. You must so develop it. Glory be to God. Are you following me now? Come on. I say, Are you following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Act 10. 19 to 20. Act 10, 19 to 20. Quickly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why Peter thought on the vision? Sometimes you have a dream or you have a vision. Look at me. This is one of the ways to break through. When God communicates with you, one of the languages of the Holy Spirit is pictures. What? Huh? pictures. They communicate with you in pictures. And you see, what you see in one picture, a thousand words may not be able to express it. So, when God speaks to you in vision or this thing, and you seem not to understand it, don't rush out. Stay there. Do what? And begin to meditate on the thing. And begin to pray silently in the Holy Spirit. And keep saying, Holy Spirit, I know you are intelligent, and you can communicate your intelligence to me. You are intelligent, and you can communicate your what? Your intelligence to me. Praise the name of Jesus. And those things will be unraveled to you. You will know what those pictures, those things that you had, what they really mean. Praise the name of Jesus. So, why Peter taught on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. If you read the story of Joseph, the husband of Mary, when he also had a dream, as he was pondering on those dreams, the voice of God came to him and said, Take thy wife, Mary. Amen. Do you understand now? So that is how to go about it. Proverbs 20 verse 27 says, The spirit of a man is the candlestick of the Lord, by which he searches the inmost being. You see, the Holy Spirit who resides in you knows everything. How many things? Past, present, and future. He knows everything. And where is the Holy Spirit? 
is dwelling in you, in union with your spirit man. So, you know, there is what is called osmosis and diffusion in biology. Praise God forevermore. So, osmosis is the movement, am I right? Huh? Of a concentrated, lower concentration to higher concentration. So, the Holy Spirit has a higher concentration of information and intelligence. He's omniscient. He knows all things. So, your spirit does not know all things. But why does the Bible say you know all things? Because the Holy Spirit is what? Is in you. So, you can gravitate as you fellowship, as you pray, as you pray in the spirit, pray, as you spend time with God in worship. Amen. You are moving your spirit, which is of low, what? Concentration into higher concentration. And then you get to know both osmosis and diffusion takes place at the same time. You just come up and say, something is about uh, dear, I perceive somebody, so, 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 so person is coming to visit us today. Amen. I perceive. If your husband doesn't, uh, if he's low spiritually, he may be calling you Aje. Aje, you know, Henry Gogwe. Don't worry. Oh. Glory be to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then you just see that person walked in. God is teaching you some things. He starts from the basic, from the elementary stage. Blessed be God. It is true inward witness that God will lead you to give, to do some certain things. He just come to your heart. Go and do this thing. And do it now. Praise the name of Jesus. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. The spirit of a man is the candle of that law, searching all the inward parts of the belly. That's why if you really want to know things and you are serious, you want to know things, you can know it. Not by going to prophet. Not by going to Babalawo. Stay with God and say, Father, you are omniscient. You know all things. Holy Spirit, you know all things. Jesus, you know all things. And your word says, when the spirit of truth is come, he will teach me how many things, all things. He will guide me into all to, and he will show me things to come. I'm going to stay here, Lord, for as long as it takes. I want you to show me this. I want you to show me this. I want to hear your direction over this matter. And then you begin to pray. You begin to sing. You begin to minister to him. Hallelujah. He will get across to you. Next, number what? Number six, Abby, through circumstances. God can guide you through circumstances. When God guided Elijah to Brookidron, when Brookidron dried, we didn't see God says, Amen, live there. He was guided by circumstances. And as he was guided by circumstances, God says now, go to Sarifat of Sidon. Blessed be God. Come on, I say blessed be God. God can guide you through what? Through circumstances. Number seven. Number seven. God can guide through nature. The Bible says the invisible creation of God is made manifest or made visible through the things that we see so that man is without excuse. He made all things. God can use every, anything to speak to you. God has used, listen to me, and I'm telling you the truth. God has used ants to speak to me before. God has used uh, chicks to speak to me before. Blessed be God. Are you following what I'm saying? God has used a Static signboard. Signboard. The wordings in that signboard just flew. I was in a vehicle spoken to me before. God has used a billboard to speak to me before. One day, myself and my wife went to Ibadan for a burial ceremony. Glory be to God. And from there, we'll be going from Ibadan to, to the embassy. Praise God forevermore. And through that program, I think they concluded the program or they're about to do the program. We just put it outside. Hallelujah. And the word said, I will go before you. 
That was just the war. That was all war. But it's not that as he just saw it, I mean, I'll go before you. The word just flew at me and it had a voice. Blessed be God. I say, Blessed be God. Number seven, through prayer of inquiry. Huh? Number, number eight. What did I say? Number, okay, so number eight. Number eight. True prayer of inquiry. Now hear me and hear me very clearly. God not only answers prayers, he also answers questions. That will be new to some of you. God not only answers what? Prayers, he answers questions. That's inquiry. Many of us don't know how to pray prayer of inquiry. Prayer of inquiry, you are asking God questions. Oh Lord, you are prospecting for a job. And all of a sudden, four jobs came at the same time. Naturally, what a natural man, a carnal man will do will be see, what is the pay? Uh, this one is higher. You <laughs> need anything. This one is Oti Sore. That's the wrong way to make a choice. You can go there, you can lose your spirituality, or that job may not endure, or you can endanger your life. Are you following what I'm saying now? So what do you do? Bring those things to God with a humble heart. Humble what? And say, Father, I'm confused now. And thank God because you have covenanted and promised to guide me and to show me the way that I should go. I recognize that there is a way that seems right to man. If not for that, I would have chosen this. You are being sincere. God wants the truth in the inward man. That may, it may show you wisdom. Are you following what I'm saying? Which one of these four? Oh Lord, I want to. I'm not going to. You are my father. You can communicate to me. He will communicate to you with utmost intelligence you will know. He may be the least paid. Hello? But you have peace and joy about it. Because, and it has a lot of prospect for you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. God answers question as well as he answers our prayer. Second Samuel 5, 18 to 22. God says, call unto me. I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you knew not. 2 Samuel 5, 18 to 22. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephi. Yes. And David inquired of the Lord. Saying, O oh Lord, shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. O oh Lord, shall I put my money into this business? The reason why many of us get our fingers burnt doing one shady business or the other is because you didn't ask God. In fact, you already know the you know what He will say before you put your money there. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. One time, a woman of God, I love her so much, I love her husband. She was pestering my life kept on sending messages and I kept ignoring. With the, with the swiftness at which she was sending the messages, I was ignoring the messages. It was about uh, one marketing, whatever. He says, ah, daddy, this thing pays. In fact, one more if I learn all, he just gave me $200. They gave me this. They gave me that. They like, let them give you $20,000. Because I have tried some of these things before. I got my fingers burnt. I went to God and said, Lord, I'm sorry. Now I know your word is true. Where gotten by vanity shall be diminished. He that gathered by labor shall be what? Diminished. When she saw I was not responding, she put a call through. Say, Daddy, eh, respond. I said, Please, I will see you. She called again. He said, One, uh, if, if I put 
so 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 amount of money i can do as many as i uh, this thing. you can tell mommy too you put your money he said within two weeks you begin to my, this was how my eyes was i said i was stingy i didn't want to insult her so eventually i saw her i said you see i've done this thing before And part and parcel of my covenant with God now is, Lord, I will never run out of you. I will not do that which will upset my peace. Whatever you give me, I'll be content with it. Because I know you know how to meet my needs. As I said, I don't have peace about Oh, say I understand you. Now, if you go and ask her now, you don't even have to ask her now. Everything she thought she had gotten there <laughs> is a deception. It's on journey. So when you ask God, He will tell you, My son, that's not my will. There is a way that seems right to what? To man. The end thereof is. So there is nothing anybody can say, Oh, Bafo, for it doesn't appeal to me a bit. What I have is what I have, and I'm content with it. They say, eh, eh, you know, a lot of times things fly on the social media. I didn't know somebody, uh, uh, Facebook account had been hacked. He's a very dear, you know, fellow to me. You know, he calls me daddy, he's his son, he's very dear. And then I saw in his uh, this thing, he said, Daddy, eh, put money in this, you know, and just send a uh, a screenshot of you no know, bank alert. He said, I just got 200,000 now. All you need to put is just put 20,000. I was just looking at it like this. I said, It can't be this guy. It can't be what? I said, It can't be him. Because you have to know people. So I said, It can't be him. Even if it is him. You got 200,000? Congratulations. That's not the way I'm going. My path is different. So, eventually, I was looking for his phone. My phone crashed. I didn't see his number. I got his number from mommy. I called him. I said, Daddy. In fact, there, during my birthday, I saw it late. And I, I'm not quick to doing those things. He said, Oh, happy birthday, Daddy. Please send your account number. I have some things to send to your account. We did. Two maps okay. We first send the account number. And then I look at I don't just look. I, mean, I see this guy from time to time. If you want to give me anything, he, he will walk up to me. Praise. I know what he can do. Praise the name of Jesus. So it was when I now called him and now said, I'm not the one. They ask my phone since last year and that is what they have been doing sending this thing to people and some people have been falling victim it will not even move me amen during the mm syndrome some people have built houses some people bought a vehicle look contentment is the game of life. Oh. If you are not contented, you will be contained. I just folded my hand. I said, I'm not interested. I said, I'm not what? I'm not interested. Some pastors, you know, I was looking at men of God talking like this. And they were telling me several people say, you know, that great man of God, that great man of God, that great the man they cannot assess. They say that's what he did. Well, they got money. You know, too. Only I'll be thinking about it until the thing crashed. If you know what entered in the lives of so many people, they entered depression. Depression. You will not be depressed. That's why we have to inquire. Oh Lord, what are you saying over this matter? It doesn't take time. 
Gloria Copeland said it does not take time to confirm and check from God. The time you would have used to check from God will bail you out from future struggle. Just sit somewhere and say, Lebra Nagadaba, you who knows all things, should I put my money into these things? Is this thing real, Lord? Uh, is it real? Oh God, that guy that is saying everything, is it real? Lepra Nosha, Damanaga, those that you sing small, you read the scripture small, you will know. You will know. You will just be having a flash inside of you. <laughs> red, red, red. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. It could be that voice you are hearing. If I and what they will be saying will be an answer to what you are just inquiring. You say, Lord, I've received. Praise the name of Jesus. David came to Balpezaram and David smote them there and said, The Lord had broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. Praise the name of Jesus. Next. And there, they left their images and David and his men burned them. Praise the name of Jesus. If you read it very well and you go back, it got to a time again. Now look it. And the Philistines came up yet again. See, one thing about God is you cannot stereotype God. That's why you must be in the spirit and you must enjoy the diversity of God. God lives in diverse ways. Do you get what I'm saying now? God has used when my children were small. My wife, myself and my wife would pray. We would pray over the night over some matters. And the children would just be doing their own play. And only she only and myself and my wife would look at herself. That is the answer. That is the answer. Hallelujah. That is what? The answer. But we cannot say that is the way God will be leading us all through. That's where many people misses it. Amen. So the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Look at. So what did he do? He prayed again. Oh God, shaking to tell you God says, Don't go. Don't what? Don't go. Stay under these mulberry trees. And it shall come to pass when you hear the wind blow. <laughs> Hallelujah. It will take time. If you are married, you want to take a decision, just hold your husband and wife and say, Father, your word says, if two of us shall agree, as touch anything. If it has was your joy, oh Lord, oh God, you have promised us supernatural sustenance. Say, cast your business. I'm sure you will not go to God to say, God, shake him, play, Baba Jebu. Because he has already showed you his word that is not part of his word, his will. Do you understand what I'm saying now? There was a will alone. It's not covered by his will. Praise the name of Jesus. So, praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, go ahead. But what I know is that I want on Tababa, they will talk about Ninja Betty, Tab, Bobo Betty, Betty, Betty. And you know, it's so cheap now that you see it on your phone flash, even in some uh, bank app. I can just see it. Thank God. I don't want to know. Glory be to God. The speed at which it enters my phone is the speed with which I delete it. No consideration. Hallelujah. And then some people will tell you, you just put my name. They, they will give you some bonus. They will run go where. Now check it very well. I want Baba Jabulo shaking you. You don't know what see every second. How long shaking it? How long know what see? The Bible says, God, if that is the way God guarantees, next month is our month of prosperity. If that is the way God guarantees our prosperity. <laughs> but God didn't guarantee our prosperity like that. He said, He that gathered my labor shall increase. And the one you gather, don't use foolishness to do what? To disperse it. Somebody say, I hear. That's how it works out. God will help us in Jesus' name. Number what now? Number nine, true godly counsel. True what? Godly counsel. In Proverbs 11, 14. Proverbs 11, 14. I just want to be sure that I'm done with this. 
Proverbs 11 and verse 14. The Bible says, in the multitude of counsel, or say, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, there is what? There is safety. So where you want to get to in life, there are people who have gotten there. What you want to achieve, there are people who have achieved it. There are people who are godly, who knows the end of a thing. So they know that is, you can't buy that experience. So when you go to those godly people, they can tell you. As you give them the outlook of what you want to take decision on. Amen? Maybe, okay, you prayed and prayed and prayed. These guys kept on, you know, propping you up. I want to marry you. I want to marry you. And they will just ask you some basic questions. Basic what? The only thing is don't lie. Don't what? Don't lie. And when you bring out those things, they can conclude, go, look. If you follow that counsel, God will respect and honor you and will give you somebody very, very good. That's godly counsel. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying now? Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. So, it's vitally important for you to understand, to understand, and to understand. Another thing is um, Proverbs 24, verse 6. The Bible says, before you make your work, before you carry out business, anything you want to do, you want to share this up. You want to shake it. In your course of study, somebody had gone through it before. So, what that person learned through rigors, it can impart to you so cheaply. Say, for by wise counsel, wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. And a multitude of counselors, there is what? There is safety. Just make sure that godly counselors. Godly counselors. Because there are evil counselors. Who, praise the name of Jesus. Evil what? Evil counselors. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the last thing that you need to understand is that you can call that number 10. God won't speak or guide you over what he has already revealed in his word. It is always futile for you to go to God. For instance, he says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You are a believer, a worker in the church, tongue-talking. You love God. And then the person you want to marry is an unbeliever. Amen? And then you are praying. God will never answer you till thy kingdom come. God will never what? Why? Because his word has already revealed it. Or you go to God. Oh Lord, should I go to church? Or should I stay in my house? After all, you will never see that in your Bible. God will never answer you till thy kingdom come. Because he has already said in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 that you should not forsake the assembling of the brethren. That's why some people are not hearing God over some given matter. If you go to God, for instance, and say, oh Lord, should I pay my tithe or not? God will never answer you. Why? He has already said it in his word. So what he said in his word is like, it's like physically, your father or your mother called you and he gave you an instruction. Oh Lord, to father. In fact, you understand what I'm saying? You go and you come back. Amen. God doesn't repeat himself. That's why the Bible says, once has God spoken, twice I heard that power belongs to him. Whatever he reveals in his word, don't query it. Just go ahead and do it. Somebody say amen. 
All right, quickly. If you must be guided, number one, you must be willing. Unfortunately, it's not all of us that are willing. And God doesn't force things on us. In, Pro, in Psalm 25, verse 4 to 5, you must show that you are willing. Psalm 25, 4 to 5, you must be willing. You must be ready. You say, Lord, I'm ready for your guidance. I don't want to be taking... I don't want to be doing uh, EJ, EOJ, no. Psalm, Psalm 25. Show me thy ways. That's somebody who is willing. Somebody say, I'm willing. Show me thy ways. Oh Lord, teach me thy path. Somebody who is not willing will not say that. Verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, on thee do I wait all the day. That is willingness. Number two, be meek and obedient. Psalm 25, verse 8 to 10. Be meek and obedient. Who will God guide? The meek will God guide. Amen. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Verse 9. Who will God guide? The meek Will he guide in what? In judgment. Who is a meek? Somebody who is humble. That's why our pride can frustrate divine guidance. Our, our pride, you think you know. Glory be to God. You think you know. There was one of my daughter who brought a guy who was, uh, you know, toasting her to me. And then I saw, I saw that guy was arrogant. And later on, my daughter told me, he said, Praise the name of Jesus. Pride is a destroy is a destroyer. You don't know. The Bible says he that thinketh he knows. Know not as he ought to know, as as he ought to know. You don't know anything. God is the one who knows everything. He knows the past, the present, and the future. You are just limited. Praise the name of Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? So the meek, the meek, the reason why he made his ways known to Moses was because Moses was the meekest man. Can you imagine God dictating the Pentateuch to you? And says, yeah, take your pen and be writing. In the beginning, because God dictated all those things to Moses. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He didn't stop God on the way. I say, sir, I have a question. Can I ask? Emma Binusa. Nimboni God you are before he created the heavens and the earth. Will you not ask? <laughs> if you are not imbued with the virtue and the spirit of meekness, you will ask. A meek person does not ask questions where the word of God has already settled it. Or else you become a question mark. Pastor Adebo said when he began in Redeemed Christian Church of God, and every time the servant of God, Parker Dionysi, says something, he will go back home to pray and ask God. He said, and God said, anything my servant say, I am the one saying it. Because if you keep asking, you become what? A question mark. So stop asking. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? A meek person will not keep asking questions. Meekness means humility. And the meek will he teach his way. May God teach you his ways. May God teach you his ways. In the name of Jesus, verse 10. All the parts of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. That is obedience. You keep his testimonies, so God begins to reveal his path to you and his path will be littered with mercy unto you. Number three, fear the Lord. If you must be led, fear the Lord. Psalm 25 and verse 12. Psalm 25 verse 12. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. See what he says. Psalm 25, verse 12. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. 
You know, one of the things I've discovered, sometimes God guides unbelievers. God guides what? And he speaks to unbelievers. You can't query him for that. And the Bible tells us the reason why he does, he does that. In Psalm 37 verse 23, when he sees a man, even though that man is not yet born again, he says, the steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Amen. When such a man, Tony, took on irreverence, you know, some people are not born again. It doesn't mean that if they die like that, they will go to heaven. No. Amen. But anything God, they may not know the way. And God, in the choices they make, God will be involved. God will be what? Will be involved. And ultimately, it will show. Shout Amen. Hallelujah. May God teach you his ways. Oh. The next one is Psalm 25 verse 13. One of the proof that God is the one guiding you, leading you, speaking to you, is your soul will dwell at what? At ease. Confusion and leading does not go together. He said, his soul shall dwell at what? Everybody? At what? At ease. They are just at ease. People will be propping you up. Ah, she put the same amount of money. I kill him in six. Go go back to our lower lawn. He knows how he's going to do it. His soul shall dwell at what? At ease. That's why Psalm, the last one is Psalm 85, verse 8. I will wait. And see what he will say or speak unto me. Psalm 85 verse 8. For I know he will speak peace. So peace and ease they are two major things. If anything you want to do or you are engaging to you but in me peace psh, get out of it. It could be a relay. It doesn't matter. You see the problem with us is that you say ah you the thing bag of boy you bore or just to cast you we have been in a relationship now right from secondary school. I went to university, I served. Right to you don't have peace. You don't have what? Peace. There can't be progress there. Get out. Somebody may be somewhere praying, praying, crying to God. Lord, where is my wife? And you are the one. And God is motioning to you. But you don't want to. You are counting the years you have spent with that guy or years you have been dating that guy. If you go ahead, you are not at peace. You are not at ease. That's why you see some, even at the point of joining them, you will see some people who say, I'm not doing it again. That's why they say a broken uh, relationship is better, courtship is better than what? A broken marriage. Now, I just use that as an example. It's not peculiar to marriage. It's every other thing. Every other word every other thing. It could be business venture. You don't have peace about it. Take your money back. Take your what? It could be even contribution. It could be what? Contribution. Can do that to cock by who? Amen. Big money. Can you have a cool show fellow by family and share a job? But God knew ahead. Shout hallelujah. Rise on your feet, everyone. It's a new day for you. You will be refreshed. In the name of Jesus, God will do wonders in your lives. He will lead you to the place of provisions, He will lead you into abundance. In the name of Jesus. He will supernaturally sustain you. In the mighty name of Jesus, in your desert there shall be a blossoming garden. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your hands and give God the glory and say, Father, I enroll in the school of divine guidance. I enroll, I enroll. Guide me, lead me. You know all that is best for me. Lead me and guide me, dear Lord Jesus. And make me sensitive, sensitive, sensitive to your guidance, to your leading. In the mighty name of Jesus, help me in every way, Lord. Help me. 
And wherever I've missed it, please forgive me. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, help me to redeem the time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. You see, the beauty of it all is that we keep learning. There is no, no one who has not missed it before. Even great fathers, they will tell you they missed it before. But the beauty of it all is that when you get to know that you are on the wrong path, you quickly move to the right what? To the right path. Somebody say amen. I say somebody say amen. The only thing is not to just be frivolous and not to take the leadership of your life by yourself. The Bible says, in all your ways, do what? Acknowledge him. That's the key, the fundamental key to divine guidance. Because Give me your hand in party, Lori. Are you had an impact, Lori? But I'm to surround there. Father, please help me. I don't know the way. You know the way. Can you help me out of this matter? In the name of the Lord Jesus. God is so merciful. He's so what? He's so merciful. He can guide you in every way. And the Lord will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. I have discovered from experience when I perceive God's leading and my will is too strong. And I go against what I perceive to be leading, or I excuse it. Amen. I always regret. You know, regret. Lift up your two hands and say, Father, help me. I want to be guided and led by you. Let your voice come clear to me, henceforth, leading me to supernatural sustenance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father, in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us, uh, even though we have overshot our time, but today is the last day of our waiting exercise. I want us to quickly do something, please. This, God registered it into my heart, and I will be disobeying if we don't do it. Praise the name of Jesus. Quickly, let's form five people. Five, 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 five. Quickly. Five, 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 five people. You can form a circle. Praise God. Five, 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 five. Good. Good, 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 good. Five, 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 five. Nabra no kata yibala. Some people are here. Some people are here. I want to come and be. Five, 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 five. You want to pray, no? Amen. And please listen to me very carefully. Five, 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 five. Under five minutes or thereabout, we'll be done with our prayer. But this is going to be the prayer. Number one, we're going to pray for ourselves now. Amen. I say, Heavenly Father. Now, before I call the prayer, so after that prayer, the next phase will be each person. One person will go into the middle. The other four per time will pray for that person's need. Amen. I say, Father, by your mercy, dispose of this person's need, whatever the need may be. In the mighty name of Jesus, dismiss it. Let your glory be made manifest. In the name of Jesus, in the place of his or our need, let your supplies take over. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So we'll do that one, 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 until everybody is prayed for. But first and foremost, say, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for all these people that I am holding, that in the name of Jesus, you will step in into their situations and into their lives. And you will reorder and make the crooked straight. In the name of Jesus, you will establish your plan, your counsel, and your purpose. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray right now. Na bradoke zon telegedebo. Riata baga bakata zakata yaba he pradosh kidaba em brada gato zoko to preki debegelebo lia prata zeke de makoto shehelebo ria kapakata he brado zeke teke teke debo male bradia mekete bota dadia damana bakata i grodu de di de mana barote de de debo you are kapara da vizokete you are kamene branota branana na nebe kotoshi habakata ebredo katababa 
every naughty issue, every makato zupre niga lega rabakataba, ete zoto toto yegete zeketele, riaka pale brodo shikele boriyadabaraba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Now let one person move in into the circle and then let the rest pray for him or her. He brana de do de bakoto zokoto predi bolobo. Ya gata yinebo kuria glebe gorobo. Whatever be the needs, whatever be the confrontation, whatever be the challenge. Lord, your word says, if there arise any matter too hard for you, then you shall arise and get to the place where God has chosen. Father, this is where you have chosen, and we are praying. Your word says, if two or three shall agree as touching anything, they shall ask on earth. Our Father in heaven will do it. So we pray for this individual right in the circle that Father, you will deflate his or her need. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will arise. You will defend this fellow. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will by your mercy reorder. You will by your mercy perfect that which concerns him or her. In the name of Jesus, let somebody else enter now. Makapato telebo. Yagrados. Liabrano dede. There is nobody without a need. The Bible says, even in laughter, the earth knows its sorrow. Lord, you who makes a difference in the lives of people, make a difference in the life of this fellow in the name of Jesus. Baba. Makaparadaba, Efi Yatoho, I Yatorere, Ninua Yene, Negute Shekelebota Daba. The Bible says, Before the mountain, you have been God of old. Deflate every mountain, convert them to miracle. No tedede, Hekubaranda, Metenele Geboto Telebo, Raka Kaka Yigate Kedebo, Malia Brado Shikelebo Kotoso Kotobariadaba. You who knows tomorrow. Who, who knows the past? Who knows the present? Nakaparaba. You walk everything according to your purpose in the life of this individual. In the name of Jesus, let somebody else enter. Make a pandorone de bele de vege debo. Ria kalebe do de diaba. Hayamabode. Ha ba 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 Ye kashata raba lebro no koto seke debo. Ria klanida. Hata zote de. Rua kakaka ya gatada bale brana bole bredo opo shatada abaya gaba kata baya bara naba opo le delu baradia eku kakata da hara mekataba I call for the things that be not as though they were in the life of this fellow in the life of this man this woman in the life of this boy girl he pronoba being currently prayed for in the name of Jesus reku shataba e bakalia e tozoto roma kata bara and about the other and propota ya glegoto sorry a lagarabacata and brotos hilaba pradekeza next person next person dig a boko to sotelebo habacata rabayaba e manaba mobo bobo bo ya dilebo ronobo sorry a laba a prado sandalaba we banish death we banish sickness we cause cancer in the name of jesus roku shata he manada leba we destroy poverty in the name of jesus we destroy every form of stagnation in the lives of god's people in the name of jesus the bible says the name of the lord is as ointment poured for therefore do the virgins love thee let the life of this individual being prayed for begin to attract your goodness your blessing your mercy, your favor, in the name of Jesus, Kakata Baraba, let victory, triumph, become the portion, prosperity, become the heritage of this individual, being prayed for. Gambalata ta ta ta, roke zoteri alaba. Gredosh, next person, da gredo, mene botozo predo bekelia, embalevra na manaba kotoze ke tekeri alaba. Oh, prodia de be. You are gata da bala vaga. Kigo po na bala vaga ta yeba huya. The word says, I know the thought that I think towards you. They are thought of peace and not of evil. To give you hope and a future. To give you an expected end. Na kapale bo robo. Ye kapara ba katazota riala. Ege shikelebo. Megete sekelebo. Lord, ke barede. Ye branada vi. You who advanced. Moses. You advance 
Aaron, advance these ones that are currently being prayed for into your purpose, into their destiny. Make a difference in every lives, in everyone, in this church. Da ke manaba ha prado tabara na he kwa kale da do debo wata vadi ba kata sataraba ya kata da o koko sheterebo pa pa la parada baso ke teke diaba. Now pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for one another that whatever be the needs, God will be supply according to His word. He will supply all our needs according to His riches in glories by Christ Jesus. God will make a difference in our lives, in our family, in our academics, in the lives of our children, in our homes, in all of our undertakings. There will be a restoration. Whatever thing has been lost, God will restore them sevenfold by his mercy, by his power, by his majesty. Everyone appointed to die will cancel that decree. In the name of Jesus, we cancel the decree of poverty, the decree of helplessness, hopelessness. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. We pray for elevation. For open doors in the name of Jesus. In Abakata, we pray for promotion. We pray for favor. We pray for supernatural sustenance. I have been young and yet I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children beg bread. Nobody will beg bread. Life will not be difficult for us. Life will be easy for us. Life will not be hard for us. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Everyone in this commission, deal bountifully with them. Make the impossible possible. Let the head of the wicked Leviathan, let it be crushed, crushed, crushed in the name of Jesus. Let every evil mark trailing any individual, man or woman, boy or girl, any family, every young and old, let them be canceled. Let them be destroyed. Let them receive the arrow of fire and judgment in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. Lift up your voice and begin to magnify the name of Jesus. Great deliverance. Great deliverance. Great deliverance. Great, great deliverance. Habakoto Zokoto Predia. Great deliverance. Yakoto Shika Namarande Baru Yabrakita Vizokonte Bria. Great deliverance. Oh, Wabakata Vazotoria Balariaba.